Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, Bear, Chris Felica, along with Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P. Will Hill will join us for the gambling group chat in a bit. Conference Championship Weekend is here. And in support of my friend, my colleague, and my co-host, Jeff Schwartz, I am wearing green. It's a little bit more of a classic, yeah. like kind of early it, I'll, 90s kind of Oregon, Oregon color here. But as holder of an Oregon future ticket, couple of them in a very nice 35 to 1, 30 to oh, 1. It's way more comfortable doing the podcast like this. I feel it, like. it's, it is, it, it's cooled off a little yeah. bit in here, so you should uh, yeah. should throw that throw that jacket on. How are we feeling? I want this game to freaking get here already. Like, come on. Let's let's play. Um, I'm excited, man. Look, I, I know Oregon's a big favorite. I, maybe it gets a 10, maybe it doesn't. But, I mean, they're telling you, obviously, that Oregon is better. It doesn't mean you win the football right. game. But, look, the, the, the Washington – thing ends at some point right where, where you win they right. played 19 straight games they've won 10 of those by eight or eight points or less they've won i think seven straight games now by 10 points or less yes there is a quality to winning football games close like there, there's certainly a quality to that bear but eventually that quality is the minnesota vikings in the playoffs because the giants last season and i right? was gonna say tcu where, last year uh, TCU the last year. No, but i looked it up tcu only won five games last year by by eight, eight points or less georgia and they've they're forty one and one in the last forty two games, which is just an insane amount of wins. They've only played five games, bear five games that have landed with uh, under eight points or less. They're five and zero in those games. The one loss was the Bama SEC championship game. They lost forty one twenty four. Like a lot of teams that finish twelve and zero do so by dominating their opponents. Washington hasn't done that now. Washington has Roma Dunze and Michael Penix. Like at any point, they could just throw the ball back, you know, back into a football game. But have we seen the offense the last two weeks? Oh, I've seen 22 it. points against the Beavers two weeks ago. Now, it was in the rain, but here's the thing. Bear, they scored 22 first-half points in the rain, zero in the second half, and 24 in the Apple Cup last weekend. The offense is not the same. It has not played as well the last seven games. Uh, Penix is averaging uh, 59% completion percentage over the last seven games. So I just think Oregon's better. I mean, look, they can still lose the game. Certainly possible because um, that's football, and that's, that's the way it works. But also... There's a scenario where everything that sort of has gone Washington's way doesn't. And Oregon just plays the game they've been playing, and this is a three-score win for the Ducks. I mean, people have been asking me about this line. Like, why, why is this number so big? Why is it nine and a half? Why is it ten? And, and I, I told them, I said, I think it's a reaction to a couple of things. Number one, just how dominant Oregon has been since that game and how their power rating uh, just – Chris Andrews at South Point has them power rated second in the country behind. I, I, that was that's a is an Oregon fan. I mean, I'm sure a lot of fans feel this way. Like, that's, it feels a little bit too much for me. Like, I, yeah, I, and, and, that, and that seemed to be the reaction <laughs> from a lot of people. Which, when every, I, I even said this to Chris. I, I said, you know, the fact that every like mo the majority of people thought that that was ridiculous makes me believe that you've got it right. Yes. And then the other thing was, I think we came out of that first game, kind of. We well, all Oregon, said it at the time that Oregon was kind of I mean, they outgained them. Kind of the better team. Better on third down. Um, you know, they won in the trenches. Look, the Washington thing is interesting because like their defense is 89th in the country on third down, but then like 25th on fourth down. They they've they've had they faced 33 fourth downs this season, and I think I've only allowed 13 to be converted. So what is it? Is their third down defense just bad? Their fourth down defense gets better? Like, what is the reason they're 111th in, in yards per drive allowed, but only 52nd in points per drive? So is that because you force a bunch of turnovers? Is that is that just Washington State? You know, factor. You know, like I, it just doesn't make. Eventually, those numbers sort of they come back to earth a little bit. So I think it's this game. Obviously, I have a big rooting interest it, in it. I'm it, just ready for the game to happen. It, it, it's so it's so funny because there's a uh, a site that says that like the luck like uh, I want to get his last name right. It's CollegeFootballData.com. Yeah, the luck factor. Bill Radjuski, like uh, Red Radjuski. I guess that's his name. Um, the luckiest teams based on post-game win expectancy. Oklahoma number State. one is Oklahoma State. Number two is Fresno State. Number three is Washington. Yeah, because the post-game win expectancy, I think they've had since the week, since their bye week in week five, they've had zero that have been 100%. Um, I think they've not even had any that have been like up in the above 75. I can look at what, what SP Plus has uh, from Bill Conley because I, I can get that information. Also, too, like, the last two games, Oregon's lost by three against Washington. They had a, a win expectancy in the fourth quarter of 90% or higher at some point in that game. So Oregon's had to finish this game. We'll be fun. I'm just excited. Like, I'm not nervous. I'm not nervous at all, man. I just want to play this game and get it done with and, and move it along to hopefully bigger and better things. And 
get get Bo Nix's Heisman. Um, we cover all the championship games in the gambling group chat because that's what we do on the show. There's not a lot of them. We, we hit all angles on them. We have some props in those as well. But, Bear, you have one other wager yep. that's not – in the Power Five Conference, the, the, the bigger game, the bigger game, the, in Allegiant the bigger Stadium, game in Las Stadium. Vegas. Here's here's Bears one wager for now until we get to our best bets at the end of the show. And again, gambling group chat, we cover a lot of of the bigger games. It is the Mountain West Championship game. It's in Allegiant Stadium. It's UNLV. It's Boise State. Boise State's favored by two and a half. The total is fifty nine. UNLV is nine and three, six and two in the Mountain West. They're ten and two against the spread. Boise State is seven to five in conference. Excuse me, seven to five, two and six, six and two in conference. I can't read today. <laughs> and six, four and two against the spread. Uh, this game of de facto home game for for UNLV here. Uh, the Mountain West deciding the conference championship by by the BCS yes. style computer Love system it. here. Uh, where are you going here? And UNLV's kind of caught some some shrapnel for that for for getting into this game after coming off of the loss. Yeah. Uh, to San Jose State, and but like. I think that's going to be a powerful motivating factor. I think the midseason, at the same time, the midseason firing of Andy Avalos has kind of given Boise a little bit of a boost, and they've certainly found their footing uh, since then, and, and it gotten things right, and the team has responded to the, the coaching change. But I think over the course of the entire season, UNLV's been the better team. Yeah. So I, 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 I played Michigan tougher than most Big Ten teams yeah. did. So I think UNLV is a small underdog here, is, is the right is the right side. I think Barry Odom's done an awesome job here. I think he'll be able to figure out that Boise offense, which is getting, it's more primarily of a run-based offense. Yeah. So I took the Rebels plus the points here. I think this is the way I would go in this one as well. Um, the, all the factors you, you you listed, Boise State offensively too, kind of like up and down, right? Some good, some bad. Defensively regressed a little bit. Obviously no no Avalos there, no head coach, uh, interim status right now. But Boise State and UNLV, again, they're 10-2 against a spread for a reason, right? Vegas, I think, has mispriced them a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, back-to-back -back nights at uh, Allegiant Stadium. Uh, is it turf? You think turf for both games? Or you think they go grass for Pac-12 and turf for uh, for Mountain West? I think they'll go turf both. I think they'll go turf both. Turf both, yeah. They're just you know, it's amazing though to be out there and see how they wheel the the grass in there. It's awesome. It's, awesome. it's, awesome it's a great stadium. stadium. I've, I've been there. For Pacto Media Day was there this year. So I was able to see that. So that's that's it for Bear for now, guys. Good One wager. Uh, UNLV plus a two and a half. We will have best bets later. Gambling group chat. We cover this all. Cover all of the Power Five. We cover Heisman. We cover favorite prop bets. We do hit some of the the other games. Uh, Sammy might have an FCS play for this weekend. We do all of that in the gambling group chat. That is next. It's going to be Bear, Sammy P, Will Hill, and myself. Here's gambling group chat. Back with the gambling group chat. The final regular season or pre bowl uh, gambling group chat. I, I should say and. So much talk about the rankings and the playoff. Let's actually talk about the games before we get to the playoff here. I mean, I guess we may as well start on, on Friday night. Like, I wore my green to support Jeff and the Ducks. I'm surprised Will and Sammy didn't get that memo. We're in purple. Uh, exactly, yeah. Well, he's got that Penix Heisman ticket that he's still hanging on to. So I think he, he probably wore the purple on purpose, if I, if I know Sammy as well as I, I think I do. But we got Oregon, Washington, Friday night in Vegas. Uh, tens are starting to pop. Uh, total of 60, I think total varies a little bit. I see some 66s, 65 and a half. So I'll, I'll, I'll call it, I'll call it 10 and 66 because that's what Circa's going with. So, Sammy, I, it feels like it's getting a little out of control here with this, with this Oregon. I think Oregon's great, but 10 against a team that they already lost to earlier this year. This is a Stardust shirt, by the way. It's not a Washington. <laughs> that is beautiful. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's just iron that out. Um, look, I'm the last person on this show that can talk about Oregon because I was the last one on the Oregon Futures train. You guys all have better numbers than I do. But I want to go back to the conversation before the final regular season game and where this line was going to be and what the future price was going to do because they were seven to one to win the whole thing before the Oregon state game. And I think we all thought they were going to win that game. But then the question was, what would Washington do? And they could have lost to Washington state. And <laughs> after that game, I was fighting with people on Twitter who were like, Oh, the line is going to be six. And I thought, did we not <laughs> just watch Oregon and Washington and this is what happens now. The overreaction is real. Everybody is now, I mean, you thought the Delhi guy liked Oregon. Everybody likes Oregon in this game. <laughs> so we're at 10. And what was the line a month ago, Will? Four, four and a half on the look ahead. So we have 
completely jumped the shark on Oregon. Obviously, we all want the Ducks to win and keep our futures alive. I don't want to lay 10, though. That ain't happening. Yeah, I don't want to lay 10 either. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure you, that, you know, there's some nine and a halfs out there, but Barry used this expression a lot, a dog with fleas. And I think people are going to see the Washington, they're undefeated. They beat them already. They're getting so many points. That means they're the right side. I'm not so sure. And, and we use the word overreaction. Is it an overreaction or is it just a reaction? Is it just an adjustment? Because Oregon, Oregon's looked great. They've won. They've won by margin. Uh, Washington has been dying to lose. If Ward just runs on third down, uh, Washington State's going to win that game last week. They're going to be in field goal range. They can bleed the clock. Penix has been dying to throw the, the ball away. Uh, he was dying to throw it away on that last possession. He has not looked healthy. Who knows? You know, there's some whispers about his health. Washington now is on a short week. Oregon gets the extra day of rest. Um, I, I have Oregon future, so I have no appetite to lay the 10. I say if you have nothing in pocket, I mean, why lay the 10 when you can just bet? It, let, let's just put it this way. Oregon, everyone's going to be watching tomorrow night uh, on Friday night. If they win and they win big, don't you just bet Knicks at minus 145 or so to win the Heisman? How is there a scenario where Oregon wins and wins going away and, and Knicks doesn't win this award? I think there might be just because of the sheer uh, volume of the numbers that, that Jaden Daniels has. I, I think well, well, what's it, the, well, it depends on, in my opinion, on when people vote. If they vote this week, it's probably for Jaden Daniels. If they vote after the, the game, it's for Bo Nix, right? So if, if there's a thousand Heisman voters, I think, Bear, something like that, it's mm -hmm. insane amount of numbers. If you vote this week, I think you give it to Daniels. And if you vote after the game and Oregon wins, I, I think those votes will go to Bo Nix. The people that are waiting will, will wait to vote for Bo Nix. Yeah, that, that, I, th I think you're right. I think Will's right. There, 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 probably, there are ways to play this game like that where you can create some <clears throat> some 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 value on uh, other other markets where you could get Oregon to win because I, I do think you're I I, I don't, I'm not a voter I've said that multiple times if I had a vote I'd vote for Jaden Daniels but I don't know why anybody would vote right now just at least watch the game see what happens because there there is a school of thought out there that if if Nick's wins the the the, the Pac-12 title and has a good game that he, that he should win and I'm sure there are people. The funny thing with the Heisman is we're not even having this conversation if neighbors hold on to that ball in the end zone for LSU right. will miss. Like a, a 10 and 2 LSU team, if they go to if they win that game, Daniels, it, it's wrapped up. It's in the bag. So, but but you're right. There probably are ways to play this game. Um are any, any are any are there any derivatives in there, any props or anything that anybody has seen that, that might they might like better than the Sutter total. Being that we, I, I did, I will admit, I did play a couple of weeks ago. I did play Washington plus seven because, like I said, Sammy, like when it got to seven, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to get a better number than that. And here we are sitting at 10, just up against the Oregon futures. So uh, I have Washington plus seven as a little bit of a hedge uh, against my futures. But anything else in this game that anybody is. Well, I, I like about the, the Oregon wide receiver props. Um, I like Oregon wide receiver props to go over in this game. Uh, Washington's pass defense, they give up a ton of yards. They don't tackle very well. And if I, I don't know when this will post, if it will post at all, but a Bo Nix rushing prop, it, it's to me, this is the game, right? He has not rushed much this season. He was he had a rush touchdown to Oregon State when they played Utah early in the season at Utah. He got the ball in third and fourth down. They ran him a little bit more. This feels like the game where you've been waiting all season. They, they purposely have not run Bo Nix. And now this is the game, right? We, you have to win this game, Pac-12 Championship, where I think they start running Bo Nix more. So if something pops up this week to, to, to take Bo Nix as a rushing prop, I haven't found one yet as we're recording this on Thursday morning. I think that's a good, a good way to play this game. I love that because quarterback runs are like the most efficient play in football, but like week four against, I don't know, Vanderbilt or some bad team, you're not going to run your quarterback 20 times. It's just not a sustainable way to, to play your season, but Hey, this is the championship break glass in case of emergency, everything's on the line. So I think quarterback rushing props over, whether it's Knicks, Milrow, some of these quarterbacks that run, I think it's rarely wrong to, uh, to play the over. Uh, and I was just going to go back there. To, you were talking about derivatives. I know we talked about this before, but I don't think we could find a book that does it. Uh, you can't play, and I can't bet Heisman in Connecticut, as we know, Bear, but can you parlay Washington on the money line with Daniels to win the Heisman? Because that would be super correlated. I don't think you can, but some of these books let you <laughs> parlay can't. the awards. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. Some of the things, is we, you know, on the NFL show, I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, parlaying some of these awards, but uh, that would be one that's, that's obviously certainly correlated. But again, can't do that in Connecticut. Yeah. Not sure if you can do it anywhere. Yeah, I, yeah. I, we're in New York right now. I couldn't, I can't bet Heisman right here either. But I remember a couple of weeks ago when we talked about this with the LSU Alabama game, I was like, I wonder if I can bet Alabama, uh, LSU to beat Alabama and bet Jaden Daniels win the Heisman. And you couldn't, obviously. Um, but uh, they, 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 I, I can't imagine that someone would 
let you do that. But I will try later when I get to Indiana because Indiana, I think, is a much better state. <laughs> Never Actually, I know it is because that's where I made. I, I, that's where I bet my Jaden Daniels future at thirty-five to one uh, Notre Dame uh, USC week. I was in Indiana. That, that's where I made. So I know you can bet the highs of an Indiana. I will report back with, with, with an answer. So we'll flip over to Saturday, and um, first game on Saturday, the Big Twelve game. Texas now up to fifteen against Oklahoma state, which is super fortunate to be here after nearly blowing that coming back from a big deficit against BYU, then nearly blowing it. Uh, I see Texas 15 and 55. Um, Sammy, we'll start with, start with you. I mean, obviously people knowing Texas needs the, uh, the game and to win by margin, Oklahoma state's kind of been, uh, hit or miss all year a lot, a lot of one a lot of, it's real it's a weird year gundy won coach of the year in the big 12 they won so many one score games but they got blown out at home by south alabama and, and they lost by 42 at ucf and that's your big 12 coach of the year but they're here again despite losing like really you look at them on paper and playing three quarterbacks early in the year and how the hell are they here so you got to give them credit you got to give this team credit I, I don't know. They didn't play in the regular, regular season. I, I don't know if I want any part of Oklahoma State here. It, it would be it would be Texas laying the number or pass here for me as much as attractive normally as a, as a two touchdown underdog would be. But I, I just think Texas, they're healthy now. The way they played last week against Texas Tech, uh, I mean, well, other than Brooks bringing up it, but they're the Baxter's fine and they're, they're, they're going to be okay with him. They're so much better in the passing game. Now defensively, I, I think they're going to have Oklahoma state a ton of problems. So I don't have a Texas minus 15 in my pocket right now, but I, I think by game time, uh, I, I might, you think anything in this game, Sam? I'm going to let Will take the total because I don't want to steal his thunder there. I, I tend to tend to agree with what he's going to say about the total, <laughs> but um, I've got Texas 121, Oklahoma state 104. So that's a 17 point edge on a neutral, not much of an edge at the window. Cause you're seeing, you know, mostly like 15, 16. Now I think it's going to keep going too, as we get closer to the weekend, I've just always been cognizant of these big dogs conference weekend, you know, like the Iowa's of the world, the Oklahoma States of the world. Wow. That's a lot of points. And then they're getting destroyed in the second quarter. And then, you know, when teams are down 28 to three, it gets a lot worse. And, and I will say this, this is that weekend where the elite teams, if they get a lead, they step on your throat. And there are a lot of people that will chase bad numbers down the rabbit hole. Like, let's say Iowa goes down 21 to nothing. Ooh, that live number's 27 and a half now. Ooh, that's a big number. <laughs> and then it's 35 to nothing in the third quarter. I feel like this is a very similar game with the Pokes where if they don't get ahead, they're going to get annihilated. So I lean to Texas. Don't love these big numbers, but I would probably lay it before I took it. Yeah, I don't love the side. I mean, I, I, my, my favorite bet here, my favorite bet maybe of the weekend is the over this game. I just think Oklahoma State plays with some pace. I, I don't like their secondary. I think that's a total mismatch. The Texas receivers versus that Oklahoma State secondary. And if you're going to move the ball in Texas, like if you get behind, the, the way to do it isn't running, it's throwing. So I think we're going to see some offense. And like you said, Sammy, if Texas is up 14 at midfield with five, six minutes to go, most teams just run it three times and punt to preserve the win. I think Texas, you know, is going to be looking for style points, dressed to impress here. They stick one in late to impress the committee. Remember, they're the first game of the weekend. So they want, they don't know what Florida State has done uh, in terms of, you know, trying to impress to get in here. So uh, to me, Texas and the over is correlated. I just think Texas is going to score a ton of points. I don't think Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma State can cover them. Uh, to me, this game goes over. I, I like the I, overplay. I, like the, I, I do think this game, as you guys have mentioned, could go very poorly for Oklahoma State pretty quickly. Um, if they can't run the football, which is their, their bread and butter, right? Uh, Gordon has almost 1,600 yards. He's averaging six and a half yards a carry. If they can't run the football, which is tough against this Texas defensive line that's outstanding, and if you're very one-dimensional on offense against Texas, probably not – probably not a good spot to be in. It could get ugly very fast. Uh, and Texas, the style points, as everyone has mentioned, they need this, right? Look, look at the standings right now. We're going to talk about it soon. They're behind Oregon. They, they they need the style points of this win to win this game, um, you know, by three, four, five touchdowns. Even five feels a lot. Uh, it's something they're going to keep trying to do. So I, I like Texas in this game. I just think Oklahoma State is too limited offensively to really test Texas. If you want to get in a throwing game, be my guest, but that's not what they want to do. That's not their bread and butter. They want to run the football. They want to make it easier on their quarterback, and Texas will not let them run the football. It looks like Texas team total over 35 and a half is minus 110. 
and then uh, you can get the 30. If you can go over 34 and a half at minus 125, over 34 and a half at minus 125, I feel like is a, a good number to have that 35 in pocket. So I think, I think we're all kind of on the same page here. Uh, moving ahead to the uh, the AC, the uh, SEC game, the big one in Atlanta. Uh, we saw this open at what three uh, it's circa a few weeks back. It's been bet up. Uh, this is there is a six and a half right now. I'm seeing a bookmaker. There's a six at bet online, and there's pretty much five and a half everywhere else. So, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll see if the six and a halves are gonna are gonna come back down or if the five and a halves are on their way up. I haven't really been 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 charting this. Um, this feels like one of those games, at least in me, looking at both teams and knowing the history of this rivalry where either Georgia wins by double digits or Alabama pulls the outright upset. Um, I, I know Bauer still isn't fully healthy after the ankle surgery. I think he's still feeling some, some pain, but Mims is back on the offensive line. Uh, I just... I know everybody's talking about how Alabama has been great since the, the South Florida game and winning all these games in Milrow has been awesome, but they've had a couple of games against inferior teams, uh, the, the Arkansas game. And then last week against Auburn where they miraculously won. I, I wonder if that puts them in a better position to pull an upset this week after getting a, a bad game against your rival out of the way. Now you're in Atlanta uh, with who knows, maybe a spot in the, in the playoff at, at stake here if you do win depending on what happens in the other games i guess if you forced me to make a bet on this game i i would play georgia minus the points i don't love it uh, because i i i do think there are no real results here would surprise me because i do think alabama is capable of winning the game uh Will, I know you and I both got a really good number on Georgia. I think 110 to win the SEC it was back before the year. So maybe I'll take some Alabama plus the plus the, uh, the, the whatever it is on the money line now. I didn't even see what see what the heck what what the heck it is. Plus 180 on the money line. Maybe I'll take some Bama uh, money line up against that. Are, are you going to do anything with that SEC uh, title bet from the beginning of the year here? You're welcome, by the way. You're lying on the beach, relaxing. I'm I, I, grinding, I, looking for numbers that, in the summer. I, I mean, one of us has got to work around here. Um, <laughs> I might take the six, six and a half, try to middle it. We were texting about this number, like, you think we'll get a seven? And we both agreed six and a half was probably the tip of the market. So um, maybe you can get a cheap seven minus 120. I think it's like a 28-24 game, which does go against what you say, where, you know, I could see a scenario where Georgia wins, but don't cover. Is it sort of eerily similar to two years ago where – uh, Bryce Young mm -hmm. on the final yes. drive pulls the game out of the fire. Bigsby doesn't go, uh, or he much. does go out of bounds. He doesn't go down. And then all of a sudden, Bama's a six point dog and they have no shot. And they actually steamrolled Georgia in that game. I think 140, 124. So uh, I like the under here. I just think both teams, their path for success is running the ball. Georgia is good on defense. They're not great. He can run it a little bit on them. We've seen that. Even Bama, I, I think Auburn had some success running it last week uh, against Bama. So if you, if both teams approaches to run the ball, that's going to move the clock a little bit. Um, both these coaches, I think, are a little bit conservative by nature, both defensive coaches. So if it's like you know fourth and two at midfield, I don't know how aggressive these teams are going to be, especially early. So I think there's with these big games, there's usually a feeling out process. So uh, 54 and a half, 55, it's around there. I would play the under. These games on these fast tracks have uh, trended over, but I just, it, it's not the same Bama team in terms of the skill and explosiveness that we've seen in the past, you know, half a decade or so. So to me, Georgia wins a close game. It stays under. I agree with that too. I was talking to guys at the super book and they said some of their sharpest accounts hit under when it was 55. Uh, we're seeing some shops as low as 53 and a half, a lot of 54 and a half, obviously get the best number per usual. You always want to have the right number, go under the high numbers and over the low numbers. I've got a couple stats for you. Peter Burns tweeted this out. Nick Saban is 10 and one in SEC championship games. Saban's also won 16 straight games in the city of Atlanta. Now, uh, trends don't pay the rent, but those two certainly help, right? <laughs> and if I had if I had a Georgia future like you guys did, I would take the six. Because then you can middle that, right? You got Georgia to win. You got Bama yep. plus six. These quarterbacks are a lot different than they were last year when you had Stetson Bennett, the vet, who got you know picked up by an NFL team. Then you had Bryce Young. These quarterbacks are just not that same caliber. Milrow throws a pretty decent deep ball, but he's pretty average in the mid-range game. And I still don't know, guys, if we know what Carson Beck is. He could have a great future in college football, could be an NFL quarterback for all I know. But how many really good defenses has Georgia faced this year? I mean, Georgia got the Tennessee, Georgia got Ole Miss, 
Pretty sure Georgia played Missouri. Uh, the Alabama defense over a course of a season generally gets better. And that, that Bama defense is a lot better in December than it was in September. To me, this game comes down to, to Carson Beck. If Carson Beck is good, Georgia wins this by a lot. If he's better than Milrow, look, Milrow offensively can hit the deep pass with the best of them. But as Sammy mentioned, it's an intermediate game. Right? If Georgia says, look, man, we're just not going to let you throw the ball deep. We're going to play safeties deep. It's not going to happen. We're going to press. We're going to try to pressure you and force you to throw underneath. Not what he does well. If Carson Beck is on, if he's on, and, and everything you guys have said is absolutely true about the defenses they face, but if he is on, guys, I think Georgia can score a ton of points in this game, and this game will be a blowout. And I don't know how you play that live because you won't get a great number if Georgia's up big at some point. But I, I think if, if the quarterbacks, if, if Beck elevates himself and Milrow just is who he is, I think Georgia would this game pretty handily, but I don't know how there's a wager to make on that before the game. I mean, maybe a Beck over for, for passing, which again, but if he's not on, then this will be a, a close game. Alabama will, will, uh, will cover the six and a half. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think both Will and, and Sammy have talked me into taking uh, a, a little, a little Bama plus the, uh, the, the best number Look, that, that I can find. The, these teams are, are both built to play each other. Yes. Oh, like Georgia's yeah. built to play Alabama. Alabama's, bu Alabama's built to play Georgia. So, on paper, I mean, the six and a half is, is a good number if you have two teams that are equally similar. Again, what sets these teams apart, I think that Georgia is slightly better on the roster, and their quarterback, if he is on, is better than Milrow. And, but look, the, the X factor, I know I'm talking in circles sometimes here, is if Milrow can run the football, I mean, that, that's a huge X factor, right? Like, if he's able to break the pocket and make plays, Alabama can move the football down mm -hmm. the field in ways that Georgia can't do, right? Because Beck's not going to be that player. So... I mean, I, I think I would lean. I would lean the points if you're asking me to to take a to take a wager on this game. But I do think, again, if Beck is on, it might be a long day for Alabama. That's why I I, yeah. I, I, I say I really no scenario here. No result would surprise me. What would surprise me is Iowa scoring against <laughs> Michigan. Uh, Wolverines looks like uh, we're up to 22 in most places. A uh, total of 35 uh, here. I did have a play in this game. I do like the under 35. Looks like South Point and Bookmaker both have 35 and a half as of right now. So, uh, unfortunately, I can't get over to uh, to see Chrissy and the boys at the South Point. But um, I, I just see this as maybe a 27-7 type of game. I don't think Mich – I mean, I would, I would lay the points if I had to play a side in the game. But I, I just don't see a scenario where Iowa hits – double figures i mean if, if they score a touchdown i think they're extremely fortunate it would have to be a michigan turnover yes. on the other side of the field or a big punt return or a penalty or something that put michigan uh, that put iowa in position to be able to uh work with a short field but but i think off of the game last week off of all of the emotion and everything that's gone on with michigan over the last month maybe it's kind of a, okay we got here we know we tower over iowa in terms of uh, skill and ability we'll just go out we'll just win the surest way run the ball right down their throat control the clock uh, and, and just get out of here safe with, with with a nice comfortable easy win so i like the under 35 and if i had to play aside uh i'd, I'd lay the 22 anything on this one will no, I think you put it well where it's like a golfer that's on the 18th hole. Just just don't hit it in the water and you win the tournament. So run the ball, be conservative. That would keep the scoring down. That would lend you to the that would lead you to the dog. That would lead you to the under. There's an under seven and a half first quarter because the one thing that concerns me, if Iowa does get down 14 nothing, 17 nothing pretty early, like we expect, you don't want a scenario where Iowa's throwing the ball to catch up because that's where Things can unravel, pick sixes. That's where, you know, strip sacks, that's where it can get uh, get a little wonky. I was good against the run. They're good in the red zone defensively. So maybe they keep this game close for a half. So it would be under anything. I, it's not enough for me to take the points. If it keeps going up, maybe I, I just either. plug my nose and think about Iowa. That's not a pleasant way to spend <laughs> your Saturday evening. No, in their room no, for not. Iowa, But I, I like the, yeah. I, I like your under angle though. We got to talk about the first half total, right? I mean, I'm going there. I'm betting under. 0.5 in the first do half. it i'm doing it totally I, don't, I don't give a damn we couldn't we couldn't get iowa to move the ball against minnesota northwestern illinois nebraska now they gotta face the best defense of the country i mean look i mean sure iowa could kick a field goal in the final minutes of the second quarter and, and that could ruin <laughs> my bet but more times than not i think it's mathematically advantageous 
to take the under in the first half for Iowa because Michigan is basically going to bully ball its way to the 50 and then play punt and then have Iowa keep, you know, trying to move the ball 90 yards down the field. This is going to be an ugly field position game. We give a lot of respect to Iowa's defense, but how many yards? Here's the better question. How many yards does Iowa have at the half? 28, something like that. I mean, they're not, they can't throw it. They're not going to be able to run it. I feel bad for Iowa people, but this is just, this is such a step up in competition. And the West, I repeat, was horrible this year. I'm not too phased about a look ahead. Michigan's ready to go, guys. They're ready. Go ahead, guys. The the prop for Iowa's quarterback for passing yards is 105 and a half. Oh, there's no way. Like, I I, I just. There's no way. Iowa played one team this year comparable to Michigan. They lost 31-0 to Penn State. 31-0 31-0 to Penn State. Like, they're, they're just not – this is the exact score in this game. Like, it's 31-0. And here's the thing. Do you remember Michigan in, in the second half of Penn State game just ran the ball the entire second half? They're going to do the exact same thing here because the worst thing that can happen for them Correct. is McCarthy throwing interception. Yep. So, worst thing that can happen, just run the football, Sammy's mentioned, just and then just punt it back and play the field position game because they're not going to score points. So, I mean, 24-0, 31-0, 27-0, 28-0. Like, I would lay it with Michigan and take the under. I think both of those are going to happen. Uh, and Michigan's not going to allow a late touchdown either. Like, the the, the, the pride in that, in, mm-hmm. in, in, that, uh, in that group. The starters will play most of the game, I would imagine. There's no game next week to rest for. They're going to play the entire game. No backups are coming in. And I don't think there's a letdown because Harbaugh's back. I don't think there's a letdown because of of you know of of, of being Ohio State. They ha- they're not a team that plays like that. Um, so I, I'll I lay with Michigan and take the under. I think both are happening. It's, it's funny, Sammy referred to like, like feeling bad for the Iowa fans. Like it made me immediately think of the 2016 Rose Bowl. Remember they had that similar type season in 2015 where they got found their way into the Big Ten championship game and lost to Michigan State and wound up making the playoff and like. I remember being at the Rose Bowl that day and all oh, black and gold everywhere, all these people. And I think it, it, the game was over against Stanford like a minute into the game. McCaffrey, and I'm like, McCaffrey I, I just to thought, the like, house right away. All, all these poor people that spent God only knows how much money on flights and tickets and what they sacrificed to get there to see Iowa the in, Rose Bowl, in the yeah. I know get to, to see it's Iowa serious. in the Rose Bowl and it was 51-7 or whatever the hell. I mean, it was. I, I was at the Big Ten Championship game a couple years ago when I when uh, Michigan beat Iowa 42 to 3, I think it was, and those I, poor Iowa fans, same thing like they were at halftime their side of the field was gone. They just had all left and all that all that time and money to to, to get there and, and nothing. But that's kind of a whole like like it's like do, do you know though is it like I wonder like if they know going into this like they they know what's coming. Right? They, they have to they, know what's coming. Of course they do. But, but they're still so, ten and two though, and a lot of programs. How many people would take ten and two right now? That's the amazing thing. How the hell is this team ten and two? Which is a the entirely different. You really think they flew factor. from Iowa though? I think half the people drove because they got to stop at the come and go. They got to get the <laughs> breakfast pizza at Casey's. They got to pile into the truck and then they drive to California. <laughs> but going to the Rose Bowl is worth it though. Oh, one, absolutely. One time in your life absolutely it's the best it's the best venue there is it's a, good, it's, it's a great scene and yeah. I, I wrote about it in my in my in my essay last week for big noon about the, the sunset behind the san gabriel mountains in that in that beautiful setting what from what's a beautiful setting as well is charlotte north carolina jeff ah it is yeah, the acc championship game where i guess this is the one that ultimately is going to determine a lot and uh Florida State, Sands, Jordan, Travis, two and a half point favorite. Totals 47 and a half pretty much uh, everywhere. And I don't even know where to start here. Like, like you look at last week. You, th- you throw out Louisville last week. I no, no. Well, well, here's the thing. You let you allowed a kick return for a touchdown, turn the ball over three times, twice inside their own territory, which allowed 10 UK points, outgained Kentucky about 115 Just yards. Enough. Florida State averaged less than four yards a play. 4-14 on third down. It was complete meltdown by Florida that allowed Florida State to win the game. Like, <sighs> I, I, look, you have to throw. Look, but 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 players, but again, but this this is what Florida State's hearing though all week about how they don't belong and people idiots yeah. like me saying they're not a top four team, but without Jordan Travis, and I honestly believe that they're not. But that's going to motivate them. I th- I think in this spot yeah, to to go out. Okay, and it, it motivates I'm them. Cut, I'm getting like, cut off to a certain point. 
And then the game starts, and the realization comes together that we can't move the football and offense. Broad maker, quarterback. Yeah, and like, and and so that only helps you to, to prepare for the game. That after the game, you get to celebrate and say, "See, we told you so." But like, from quarter one to quarter four, are you going to move the football? Right. Louisville played Notre Dame and shut down the rushing attack. If you're one dimensional against any good football team, Louisville. Look again, throughout last week, it was their rival. They had already clinched a spot in in, in this game. They played terribly. Like and to me, you just throw that game out. If if Florida State cannot run the football, are they going to move the football at all? And the answer is no. And this is the best offense Florida State has played since when, Bear? And forever? Like, Louisville can move the football. So, I think Louisville wins this game. I mean, the line's two and a half for a reason, guys, right? I mean, I, I think this is very clear that this game is close to a coin flip. And I'm taking the, the sort of the healthier offense right now with a decent defense in Louisville. Can I, can I just, before I get, I, get, I, I am going to read the offenses that Florida State has played lately. Florida with with a backup quarterback, Miami with a backup quarterback, Pitt, Wake Forest, Duke without Riley Leonard. He put half the game, right? Or something who's come back yeah. from injury in that game. Syracuse, okay. Ooh. Virginia Tech. God, the ACC was absolute dog crap this year. <laughs> I mean, I, I look, I know you look at the Sagarin ratings, and it, it is the worst, worst power five league. Wow, there. I mean, we talk about the Big Ten West having some bad offenses. Good God, the, the ACC was terrible. Okay, Sammy, on to you. I'm sorry. I was laughing. Jeff just alluded to it after the game when Florida State came back and beat Florida, and they were interviewing Jared Verse at you know, midfield, and he's like, yeah, we had faith in the quarterback. I'm like, did you watch the game, bro? I'm like, what are you talking about? You had faith in him to do what? He couldn't move the ball for three quarters. Now, look, more reps is probably better. Uh, going forward, you know, he's going to have a little bit more confidence, I would think, because uh, that was a must-win game, but so is this. I mean, this is Florida State's last stand. If they lose this, forget it. We don't have the conversation about are they deserving or are they worthy. This total also got absolutely ransacked. 53 and a half on the open of 47 and a half. Uh, so clearly the market is sh uh, shorting points. I'd probably, I'd probably take two and a half with Louisville. I know I could have got a better number, but Jeff Brown this year, you know, who would have thought that Louisville would be live to win? Now, a lot of things had to go their way, but everybody, every pundit, every magazine, every story before the season was Florida State or Clemson. Clemson mm -hmm. or Florida State. And Louisville just did what it had to do. And Brown turned that thing around in less than a calendar year. It's been an outstanding season for Louisville. Yeah, it's been all Louisville money, like you mentioned. I think the line opened, what, four and a half, five, and it's just going down, down, down through the key number at two and a half. I kind of like Florida State. I think they can play the us against the world thing. They still have pros at the skill guys. They still have a really good coach. Now, Louisville does too, but they uh, Florida State has pros in the front seven on defense. I thought the, the defense played a little better last week. And, and we can say, look, it was a backup quarterback last week. Florida just completely unraveled, which is true. But give them credit, 12 nothing in the swamp, on the road, backup quarterback, to come back and win that game and actually cover this, right? That was a tough beat if you had Florida. That's a good win. That, that's not yeah. an easy win. A lot of teams would, would crumble there. They did show some toughness. And we like, again, yeah, we talk about do they deserve it? Are they one of the four best, which, which we know they're not? But that was still a gutty win. So uh, I'm a little contrarian here. I think this money line's a little cheap. There's some 125s out there on the money line. I could see a scenario where Saturday night to Sunday morning, it's, uh, it's a lot of talk radio of should they, will they, what's going to happen? I, I kind of think Florida State's going to win this game. It's funny because I went back and, and after that game is just kind of Florida is the type of season that they had. And they beat four power five teams this year, two, well, two, four FBS teams, rather. A couple of them were three and nine Charlotte and two and 10 Vandy. Like, like that, that Florida team just had an absolute debacle of a season. So, so let's get into it then. Like, like we'll talk about these scenarios. Assume, assume Florida State, assume all the favorites win. Georgia wins, Oregon wins, Michigan wins, Florida State wins, Texas wins. Uh, there, there we are. What, what are we doing on, on, on Saturday night, Sunday morning in the, in the committee room? I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I look at what the committee says. It's in the, 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 the book, book Oregon said it all week. Our, we don't we talk about deserving. We talk about yeah. the best four. We talk about it's in there. We, injuries and player availability are all part of the evaluation process and the criteria. If you're using those two things, like there is no way I can say Florida state right now 
is one of the best four teams in the country. Is it cruel? Yeah. Is it harsh? Yes. But ultimately, it's never been about the best four in the playoff, despite what the committee tells you. They, they put deserving in there. You know what deserving has gotten us? Deserving has gotten Michigan State getting blown out by Alabama. Oklahoma getting blown out by LSU. Washington getting blown out. Uh, Cincinnati getting blown out. That's what deserving has gotten you by putting in this team with the zero in the loss column because they won all their games. You, this, the Florida State resume is not what happened the first 11 games. The Florida State resume is the team that they had against Florida and the team that may, now look, maybe they'll go out Saturday night in, in Charlotte and play great. But I, I just have a hard time under any scenario thinking Florida State's one of the best four teams in the country. And, and I know that that sounds a little bit cruel to everybody else on that roster, but you compare them to Texas, you compare them to Oregon, you compare them to Ohio State. Like I, I asked Chris Andrews earlier, just got, I was curious what the numbers would be. Like, yeah, Florida State is a 15-point dog against Georgia and a 12-point dog against Michigan. Like, 15. I, 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 we, don't, we don't need another game like that. Texas will be favored by seven points over Florida State. So, again, I know spreads are not truly like the end all of, of better. It's used to design to try and get money on both sides. But they're based in power ratings. And the numbers are telling you that right there. If you want to put Florida State in because you think they're one of the best four teams, fine. I'll, I'll disagree with you. But I'll be like, okay, they won all their games. They're in. Fine. I don't feel like I won't be pounding the table that the committee screwed up. It's an out. It's an injustice that Texas didn't get in. I feel I will feel that Texas should have gotten in, but uh, it's not going to be like I'm, I'm sitting here go, going nuts about it. I agree with everything you said, but here's the reality. If Florida State goes 13-0, they're in the playoff. Like, I'm sorry. That's just it's what's going to happen. You're That's 13-0, what I think. Power 5 Conference champion. You're into the playoff. And the debate will become Oregon or Texas. And in this scenario, we're all the favorites win, right? And – Look, obviously, I'm an Oregon guy. If Oregon's fifth right now, as they are, mm -hmm. and they beat the third-place team, which is Washington, I don't know how they don't go to number three, right, in, in this situation. And Texas, I understand. You, you played better teams, possibly. You're straight the schedule, blah, 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 blah. Like, I get, I get the argument that's there. But the committee has told us guys now for four weeks that they think Oregon is better than Texas. And if Oregon beats the third-ranked team, I can't imagine – that they get jumped by Texas in this in this scenario. Now, the debate might be Texas and Florida State for the committee, right? If Oregon wins and you go Texas, Florida State for four. Um, but I, I just don't see, you know, a, a, a way for Oregon to beat Washington and the scenario laid out that we have now and knock it into the playoff. Now, if Alabama beats Georgia, all bets are off. I don't know what's going to happen then. That, that makes it obviously tough for the committee. So, Will, I think Oregon's in if they win, and then Florida State's in if they win. If Florida State loses, then maybe the opportunity for Texas or Alabama comes in. That's how I see the uh, the, the the committee going on Sunday. We're so close to just getting a dream Final Four, just such a, a balanced, competitive, as good a Final Four as we have. If it's Georgia, Michigan, Oregon, Texas, regionally it makes sense. It's balanced. All the games would be good. All the matchups would be fun. I tend to think Jeff is right, though, that if Florida State's going to win, that they put them in. Um, is there a human element to this where the committee just, hey, path of least yes, resistance? What, absolutely. What, what do we get the least crap for? What's the least controversial um, in terms of, like, self-interest? All right, we put Florida State in. Hey, they went undefeated. What, what do you want me to do? And that's just – that's and they're look, people are going to complain no matter what. Texas is going to – whoever gets left out is going to say they deserve to be in, uh, and it's going to get interesting next year when these – we're at 12 teams and, you know, these 15th and 16th teams tr try to get in. But uh, I just think there's a path of least resistance where you say, hey, they're undefeated. We put them in. It, it's easier. I hope I'm wrong. I hope it's Texas. That's a great um, playoff, but I kind of, I, it, it'd be interesting. Um, you know, th they'll repost odds. I would think to make the playoffs and if Florida state wins Saturday night, it'd be interesting to check those odds. Those odds are usually correct. Florida state deserves it, but I'll say that I'll say what nobody else said. That game would suck. The game would suck yeah. if yes. Florida state gets in. And I want to watch two really good games. I think we'll, started to paint the picture there. You have Oregon in the West, you have Texas in the South, Michigan in the Midwest, Georgia in the Southeast. You cover all the big factions of the country for the most part. You have two really good games where the lines are going to be tight. Yes, Florida State deserves to get in, but life isn't fair. I'm wearing glasses and a purple shirt. I look like Dilbert's son. Life <laughs> isn't fair. Eventually, we need to get to a place where we can have two really good football games. And the best two football games 
are going to be the ones with Georgia, Michigan, Oregon, and Texas, period. I'm sorry, Florida State. It is what it is. And, 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 and I think it's also telling, too, that let's say Oregon were to win this game, that they wouldn't even more, they wouldn't move Florida State up to three. They keep it at four so Georgia has the easier game, right? Yeah. Uh, and then move Oregon or someone else to three. Like, like the committee is telling you uh, in the end result that they don't think Florida State's very good. Otherwise, they, they put them at three and let Michigan have that game. But they want the number one team, obviously, to have the easier game if it ends up having to be Florida State um, playing in that, in, in that four spot. So the committee is sort of telling you all along that – you know, the Florida State is not very, they're good, not as good as the other teams, and they're at four for a reason. Yeah, no, and, and, and that's the thing. I I, I talked about, you talk, said it earlier, that the ACC is the weakest of the Power Fives. Florida State's the, I think, the weakest power-rated team of, of all those to end. And that's, I think Washington's below them, Washington below them now? I saw Washington, in, in some Florida of them, State 12, Washington, okay. uh, Washington 12, Florida State 11. But, but, but yeah, I hate despite, that despite what, it's the what would I do versus what would the committee do? What would I do? I, I'm with, with 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 Sammy, and I, they're not. But what Will said, there's a human element in there where it's like, it, are are the whomever the, the former coaches, whomever admitted, whoever was on that committee, like, oh, we really wanted their 13 and 0. They deserve it, and I'll deserve to go to the window and lay 15 with Georgia and win well, 42 but, to seven. But here's the thing, though, like. Ultimately, obviously, the goal is to win all your football games. And if Correct. you don't put them in the playoff, you're basically saying that, like, in the end, that doesn't matter. I mean, that that's the message you would send. It, it and doesn't matter, but it's not the same team. I, I understand that. I totally get that. But they still have won all their football games. And, like, that in the end is the goal. If you're a Power 5 team, no matter what your schedule is, not a lot of – not a lot of finish are defeated for for obvious reason. And but if you're able to, to to run that table and the committee says, you know what, we're putting Texas in because Vegas has them rated higher than you guys are, you're basically saying that the games don't matter, right? I mean, like in the end, that's what you're saying. And I think that's a message that they're probably not going to send. We we all agree though that Louisville beats Florida State, Texas wins the Big 12. Texas is in, right? That, that, there's no yeah, debate nice. like with anybody else. Okay. The the, sure. the one the look, the doomsday scenario well, obviously Georgia Alabama lost, winning, would, Oregon yeah. winning. Yeah, this is that. This is the scenario. It's, like I want, like like uh, what happens if Alabama beats Georgia I, and those other teams have, win? Like, is is that maybe a situation where? I don't. Florida, you State put Georgia in. Florida State wins. Georgia's out. I mean, Georgia's in at four. I guess Michigan's one. Alabama's two. Washington or we went Pac-12. Or, or, or Oregon's three. three and Bama's four. I mean, Georgia's four. And Florida State would be out then. You got. Wait, that's, you got that's what I'm getting at. Texas. You put Bama in over Texas. Texas beat Bama. Yeah, see, I'm with you. This is why this yeah, is where it gets tricky. Like, I don't think there's any scenario where you can have 12 and one SEC champion Alabama, 12 and one Big 12 champion Texas, and Alabama goes and Texas doesn't. So that means Alabama is no SEC, no SEC team, or or Georgia stays in. Which again, how could you do that? You've got twelve and one SEC champion Alabama, twelve and one non SEC champion Georgia. Alabama beat him. It's like that's a scenario where you kind of maybe do you have to figure out a way to take both Alabama and Texas? Yes, Bama would absolutely have to be. In. I mean, they're not leaving Bama out if they if they won this game. Bama would hundred percent be in, and you can't put or Texas in. Yeah, you, you can't you can't put Texas you can't put Georgia over Texas because Texas beat Bama. Georgia wouldn't have a, in this scenario. Texas would be a conference champion. Georgia wouldn't be a conference champion. So Texas would have to go over Georgia. So yeah, it would be Texas, Michigan, uh, Georgia, and uh, Texas, Michigan, Bama, and, and Oregon. No, Florida. Well, Florida State would be an undefeated thirteen zero probably. I don't know, but I don't know about. I don't that. know. I don't think so. I don't know. I I I I I, 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 I think that that scenario might have Florida State. Like well on I the agree. outside. Well, it's funny. Well, oh, now we want to curb Florida State, huh? Now, now Florida State's out, huh? Interesting. Oh, that Sorry, hey, look, State. I'm the one that I'm no, the one that thinks they no, should I, be out regardless. I, I said, oh, I think they'll be in 13 over over 12 one Oregon. I, I'm telling you, right. I think they would be in. I'm not saying it'll be right, but I think they'll be in 13 0 They figure, and then you'd figure out everything else, and you have to reward Texas for beating Alabama in Alabama. So both Alabama and Texas will be in Michigan. And Oregon will be left out. Oregon will be five or six, and they go play in the Alamo Bowl or whatever bowl's next up for the Pac-12. I'm looking that forward to the 20th Let's not even talk about that. 
<laughs> I've watched enough Pac-12 football now for my entire lifetime to know exactly how that's going to end up happening <laughs> on Saturday night. I'll be, I'll be in my, I'll be in my, my house just begging Georgia to win that football game. The the fun, the funny thing is how like, we talk about like the Pac-12 has been the one conference championship game lately that has actually generated some upsets. So like, like we talk, we talk about, we talk about like which favorite is most vulnerable to lose. And I guess you throw Florida state That's out there. Sure, that, Oregon beat Utah and yep. Utah beat USC yep. last yep. season. So it's you, actually interesting in the, in the rematch, it's happened a bunch of times in Pac-12 over the rematch. The actual, the winner of the first game has tended to win the second game as well. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. People in the rematch favors the, the losing team. It hasn't happened that way. Right, so, so we rip through all the, the, the power five conference title games. Are there any of the, uh, uh, the the other group of five games out there that uh, striking anybody's fancy there. Uh, Will do you have any plays in the, any of the other games? Uh, it looks like a lot of points in the MAC. I mean, the MAC, the MAC. I know everyone loves MACTION, but that has become a league that's really dropped off. And you're getting eight in that one. That looks a little high. Uh, and I think tomorrow night, New Mexico State's getting ten and a half. They've had a you know a, a good season. They've been a covering machine. That ten and a half looks a little high too. So th those two dogs, I, I think, are live to me. SMU two lanes interesting. That number has really bounced around. Sammy, I don't know what you thought of, uh, about that game or anything else, or if you have any uh, FCS plays, Delaware or anything. Uh, I think he's on a third string quarterback. I'm sure you're you know scouting his junior high tape. But to me, the, the uh, those two dogs are interesting. Yeah, the uh, the Fighting Blue Hens, right? Delaware, yes. love Delaware. Made a lot of money with them against going to Montana. Oh, when Flacco was there, they just all they did was cover when Flacco was at uh, at Delaware. Um, I did bear before I get to the uh, the Mac. I did make a number for you just in case you were wondering. I know we just did a bunch of hypotheticals. If uh, if Colorado were to sneak into the playoffs somehow, uh, Colorado would be a thirty six point dog against Michigan. Thirty six is the well, number. Yeah, it was your your commemorative uh, SI Sportsman of the Year issue autographed special gold plated leaf edition framed is is en route to uh to boston maybe actually you know maybe i'll maybe i'll reroute the delivery and actually bring it to you in person that way i can give you a nice little holiday gift there and ring in the Ooh. new year on gold a on, plated on a good coin Ooh, we watching fox news at midnight i love gold plated coins um i, I, I was gonna see. say <laughs> i would probably take the points with miami ohio toledo is a very good football team. Toledo has a very good roster. The issue with Toledo, and I know a lot of you that, that bet the Mac know this, Jason Candle's around a 35% success rate as a double-digit favorite. Now, this isn't double digits, but it's very close. We're seeing eight, eight and a half. Big numbers are bad for Toledo, and they have been since he took over, and that's just mm -hmm. the reality of the situation. They win these games, but they don't cover a lot of them. And I know what happened in 2018 has no effect on what happens in 2023. I think trends sometimes get sort of manipulated and then repurposed the way you want them to be. But that is a scary number to lay. Like, I would have been okay laying six and a half with Toledo, but anything eight or higher is just through that most key number in college football. And I would take the Red Hawks way quicker then I would take the Rockets laying a bigger number. Good. I'm, I'm looking at your the FCS schedule now because, because we'll teach you up there. Well, what a good North Dakota, the North Dakota State at Montana State. That is a really good uh, FCS uh, what, playoff game. What is the line next year for North Dakota State at Colorado week one? I think that's a week one matchup. Do they play? Yeah, I think it's week one. I think it's Bison, Bison Buffs week one next year. How about that? Um, <laughs> what are we I wonder, I wonder the, the, the bison kind of are slipping a little bit. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're no longer the elite power that, that South Dakota state has taken over and, and Montana state is their, their program has, has emerged as well. Yep. It's yeah. It's they're hosting the North Dakota state Saturday, 10, August 31st, 14, 14 probably. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a ton of hype around, you, you know, the off season hype machine will come back and Shadur will be back. Hunter will be back. And, and then they'll, they'll bring in another full round of recruits after he bad mouths the players and kicks the ones that he has on the team right now and runs so them I'll tell out. You what, their schedule next year is a lot different than the Big 12 and the Pac-12, I'll tell you that. In a Ooh. good way or a bad way. Just, I don't, I mean, Cincinnati, Kansas has been better, obviously. Baylor, Kansas State, oh, it's just different than the Pac-12. They'll win two conference games next year, I have a feeling. Sportsman of the year if, they, if it gets to a ball next year. Time Magazine cover. <laughs> All right, guys, have a great weekend. We'll do it again next week. We'll preview some of the uh, the upcoming balls, the uh, first thoughts on the uh, semifinals and anything else that pops up. Do we want to do Thursday Night Football before? 
Do you want to do oh, Thursday yes. Night Football just quickly? I blew the clothes. Yeah, let's do I it. blew the clothes. We should do we should do Thursday Night Football. That, that must mean you really, really like something just, if you're I'll, making sure go. to remind <laughs> me to get Thursday Night Football in here. You, 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 you're dying quickly. to get something in. No, you're Cowboy fine. Team we got time. Over 27 and a half. I just think there's some 27 and a half. There's some 28 and a half. Uh, Cowboys, their last three home games, 43, 45, 49 points. They've scored 30 plus six straight. Uh, the Cowboys are going to get their points here. I don't want to lay the nine. Obviously, it's a good teaser range, but Cowboys team total over for me. By the way, I'm glad you did say that because I wanted to give you a, a big virtual hug and a pat on the back. Last week, the Seahawks missed the playoffs, the plus 180 or whatever it was last week when we were on air. And now it's what minus one sixty, and you got the Rams plus four ninety, which is now all of a sudden a great bet because the Browns are all beat up. So I text Bear about this. He, oh, oh, it'll find a way to lose. This is the, like the negativity comes off of on the air is this cheerful, likable guy. It, it, <laughs> like in real life through text, he's just so miserable. Just a miserable person. I am. I, I am. I, I am. I'm just. I, I actually am when it comes to that. I, I usually. I'm a very pessimistic thinker. But but. After having Sevilla lead 2 0 at home yesterday against PSV, they get sent off. They got a guy sent off the 2 1, an own goal late to tie it. And then I, I was done right there. And then they wound up, I didn't care. I mean, and then they wound up losing the game anyway. But yeah, that was a, that was a hard one to stomach with the 2 0 lead at home, even down a man uh, to, to, to give that game away. But uh, we, we, we bounced back with uh, Sheffield. Uh, Sheffield under one and a half team goals against Leicester. That that worked out okay. Oh, congratulations, and we, and we got good with that. On that so one. Good. I'm glad you hit that. You're you're, you're welcome. You, yeah. you 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 you. Thank you. You tell us that. You're quite you're quite welcome. <laughs> you, you you may not want to you want, you may not want to lay the price that I did with the under one and a half team goals. That that can get a little uh, a, a little pricey. But back, <laughs> Sammy, anything on Seahawks uh, Seahawks Cowboys tonight? Before we talked about my you betting, you just off a lot of things. The things I have no idea what you're talking about. Those could be like bitty ball basketball teams for all I know. Like third grade, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Uh, I like Dak to throw a pick minus one ten. Seattle likes to bring pressure, confuse coverage. I think he's primed to probably wing one. And I thought when you were dishing out virtual hugs, I thought Jeff Schwartz was going to barrel over there and give you a real hug. The look on his face, like he. You said hug, and I thought he was I saw it. Come over there and go for it. I know. Bear needs a hug. It's so funny. As literally as we're doing all this, I get I get a text from 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 a buddy of mine. How does Daniels not win the Heisman? Nix is favored. What am I missing? It makes me want to bet more on Daniels. I mean, it's we've laid this out. It's very simple. If the voters wait till this weekend and Bo Nix plays very well. He will have a national spotlight on Friday night against a top five team, and he might win the award. If he doesn't play well, Daniels will win the award. If people vote beforehand, Daniels will win the award. I mean, Daniels has played great this season. If Daniels wins the award, bravo. He's done a great job this year. I, I, it's not, it doesn't seem very complicated. That's what people are, the line is where it is because they think Oregon's going to win the game. Okay. I think we got it all in now. I apologize for giving the premature close. Well, thank you for reminding me about the Thursday night NFL game, which I, I will be locked into tonight in Indy. Maybe a little room service. Uh, we're saying Elmo delivery, maybe. We'll see. Ooh, shrimp cocktail Ooh. and delivery? That's bold. Yeah, that'd be very bold. <laughs> I, that stuff is, I, remember, I remember when when <laughs> when we game day was in the, the Big Ten championship game. I think it was uh, one of the, um, the, it might have been the, one of the Michigan State, Ohio State years. We had uh, Joey Chestnut on. Um, is a celebrity guest picker, and like one of the things we made him eat was like the the shrimp cocktail and the sauce, and it was delicious. I actually, I actually, they actually like dared me to down a couple of them on the air as well, and I'm like, absolutely. I mean, how many do you want me to eat? So yeah, it was. Clear the sinuses out. Isn't it was it? It, it was about four degrees, so it was definitely needed. All right. On on, on that note, nobody needs the the visual of me eating shrimp cocktail and in freezing Indianapolis in early December. So have a great weekend, guys. We'll do it again next week. Welcome back from the gambling group chat, uh, Bear. I, I got out of that group chat that we think Iowa scoring zero points collectively. Well, as long as, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's pretty much yeah, the... Uh, zero points for uh, Iowa. I, I, we, we, we joked about it all year long, but you really just, if you want to just really just sit there with your jaw wide open, like take a look at the Iowa offensive. Oh, it's terrible. It, it, it's, it's simply... It's unacceptable to be that, to be 
a power five team like Iowa not can have any sort of offense, but that's what they want. And now they're, but look, they're 10 and two and they're in the big 10 championship game. So, all right, bear has one bet so far. Let's recap that. Then we'll get into our best bets for championship weekend. A bear is taking UNLV plus the two and a half in the mountain West championship game. That game is de facto home game for the running rebels. Uh, all right, bear best bet. Uh, you mentioned earlier in gambling group chat, uh, what you're leaning. And yeah. this one I feel like is like, not a no-brainer, but I don't know how else you play this game. It's pretty obvious. I, I, under 35 and a half yeah. in, the, in the Big Ten game, Michigan-Iowa. As I talked about in the chat, I'd consider laying the points with Michigan. But I'd be shocked if Iowa scored or scored more than seven points in this game. It just feels like a 27-7 type of game where Michigan just kind of just slow, methodical, just runs the ball. It just kind of like it did in the second half in the Penn State, Penn State yep. try and get – McCarthy and healthy or avoid any more injuries like they unfortunately yeah. had in the Ohio State game. Maybe, like I said, they start a little slow. Yeah. It's coming up of, of everything that's happened over the last six weeks or so. But but Iowa is not a threat to no. to win this game or score double digits. So uh I, I went under 35 and a half and I'm and I may wind up with a little uh Michigan minus 21 and a half. Actually, I, I should I already have a Michigan minus 21 and a half in pocket. So I, I anticipated this number going up to around yeah. 24, 25. But so we've got a little bit of wiggle room right now if I want to do something back. But uh, I feel pretty good about Michigan. Yeah, the only the only drawback to this wager is you could have uh, a, a Dante Moore moment for J.J. McCarthy. And that would be the only way this <laughs> happens. Was that not the the perfect, like, end to like the final official Pac-12 after dark game where Dante Moore came in and threw a pick in the end zone in the first play. Yes. Like that was that that was just like perfect for for, for that to happen. Uh, wow, what a debacle that game was. Oh yeah. You talk about the, the 30, total 30, total 30, swing beating SC yeah. previous week and the following week you lose to the Golden Bears. Not just lose lost 33 to 7. Yes. Um, all right, I'm going to go to my best bet. I'm staying in the Pac-12 conference. Um, I, I was going to take Oregon minus the nine and a half. I figured I'm not going to do that. We'll go Tez Johnson here in a prop over 75 and a half receiving yards. He's their second wide receiver. He's had over this number now in four straight weeks. He's actually only 60 yards away from 1,000 yards this year, second wide receiver bear. So he's been a big part of this offense. Since, since the Washington game, I think we've seen Oregon's passing offense kind of uh, – get expanded and included that is Tez Johnson's ability to run after the catch has been great. And if Washington decides to say, Hey, look, we're going to try to take Troy Flanken away. It's Tez Johnson game, man. So I think we're going to see a lot of catch and run from Tez, who is uh, Bo Nix's stepbrother, stepbrother. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, great have a, story. They, they have a great connection there. So give me uh give me Tez Johnson here over 75 and a half receiving yards. Uh, and again, I mentioned this earlier. If, if there's a Bo Nix rushing prop posted at some point, I would, lean heavily to that as a second best bet, uh, but it's not been posted yet. Yeah, I'd I, I check. Yeah, make sure you check out the, the column as well, because I know I alluded to it in the group chat. I might, I'm, there, there might be a Texas minus 15 that finds its way into my, uh, I'm, I took that in, into, myself, into my yeah. account or a Texas team total that finds find its way uh, into the account. So make sure you check out the column on, uh, on foxsports.com. Hasn't been a great season. Uh, we we've had fun though. We've, yes, we've had fun. We it's hopefully, nice. hopefully the entertainment dollar is uh, been worth. Like I said, but it, it's amazing how just one year everything clicks and you're 21 games over 500. And this year you're 10 games under 500. Yeah. So it, it sucks, but I wish I could have had a little bit better luck. But hopefully we can uh, find some winners this weekend on championship weekend. Find some winners during the bowls. Maybe some of those Oregon futures, we'll conference hit. futures, and whatever else. Uh, Heisman Futures that yeah. we suggested play, and maybe we'll, that'll uh, that'll make up for a lot of the bad. So that's it for another uh, it. final pre bowl edition of the uh, of Big Noon Kickoffs Bear Bets. Been a uh, a good run. Appreciate everybody. Appreciate you and Sammy and Will for the gambling group chat. That's always a uh, a fun. I like how it's now really become the majority of the pod. It takes up the yes. longest amount of time because it's it's just good fun conversation. So. Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets, another one in the books. Appreciate everybody's downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, checking us out on the YouTube channel as well. Always fun. We have a great production team that puts in a lot of great work with the, uh, the graphics and production, so hopefully you enjoy it as much as we do. Remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win.